I always wanted a Mori episode with Kingdom characters, and Hara has granted me one. It's time for another chapter of What the hell is Olsen doing? Let alone thinking. You would think returning to Hisha Unit will continue the trend of greatness with the plan going more or less accordingly. Instead, they are out there fighting without any lead to their goal. Maybe the night before another day of directionless fighting will bring Olsen's next order to the light. If only. This chapter continued the trend of Olsen's mysterious agenda with the right wing as everyone begin to question his method and something personal. You would think Chin of the right wing will have a very hard time to fight against Zhao's army with three general tier men. Call it a miracle or luck, but Shen and everyone else managed to live long and somewhat did more damage than Zhao did. At least the way how Shin was heavily breathing after killing crap load of enemy in the field. On one hand, that's impressive. On the other hand, that's not good news. Throughout the entire chapter, Akko slept like he was already dead, while everyone outside are fighting until they reach to the very limit. It takes Shin and practically everyone to fight as Gyo-on and others are far away, spectating like nothing to worry about. Sure, Zhao lost this round in a way, but the next day and so won't be the same. If there's no orders or tactics to follow, Shin and others will be out of stamina. On the bright side, we got a nice reminder that Gaku Ed is dead, so the army remains leaderless. That kill is still glorious to look at. The narrator elaborates on what took place during the day since everything was off panel. Everyone in Chin did a hell of an effort. Again, it is surprising that nothing really bad happened. The part that stunned me a bit is Akko Army is the MVP out of armies. Despite having no leader Akko, they still put out the most impressive feat in compare. Funny because they were the most expected train wreck like what happened with Mako Army. Instead, they have pride of steel and fight like nothing has changed. What an amazing army Akko trained. Going by this day, everything should be fine then, right? Not exactly. Immediately after the narrator explained Chin's achievements, Ten is the bearer of bad news and say there's no chance that it will repeat tomorrow. Way to break the mood. I know she's being realistic, but I like to feel safe, dammit. There's another friction between her and Ohan during the conference. He continues to be the guy who calls her out on her superiority. Like, who died to make you the leader? Damn, the hate goes deep. I wonder what the end game is in this case. Will Ten get any recognition from Ohan? Not that she care, but still. She gets pissed off and yell about taking charge of Akko army for the time being. One of Akko's men talked about the pride of the army, how Akko trained them to be strong and bold. They can fight day after day without appearing like they lost stamina. That being said, their willpower will deteriorate eventually because they know no one there isn't hurt by Aku absent. They can only stay at their prime for a short time, unless they have a new commander in his place. The man they chose to replace him is not Shin, but Ohan. Poor Shin continues to be left behind. This is an interesting development. I like the fact it continues where we last left off with Ohan's development. I still remember some of his best moments of this arc so far. So I was glad that he's being seen as the prime candidate to fill in Aqua's position. I find it funny how Shin is like, oh, not this again. He even points out how Aqua army is similar to Mako army. Hey, it's only missing the letter M, you know. He has a point on how everyone seems to be only trained as soldiers and nothing else. Going back to Ohan, Akko Army has reasons to ask him. Of course, one of the many reasons is he is Olsen's heir. Working under Akko is equivalent to working under Olsen, so it's no wonder they see this as a special honor. To give them credit, they do highlight his achievements since the clash against the Wayfire Dragons at Chiyoyo three years ago. Basically, they saw him fit for the commander's role with his prestige and heritage. It's rather a good feel moment for Ohan, finally receiving the recognition he deserved. Even Banyu is crying, got me feeling like he has made it. 
Of course, they don't have the control to place someone in charge of our Supreme Commander's orders. That's why Aqua's men already sent a messenger to request Ohan to fill in. Wow, he wastes no time. Poor Shen is out of the league with the debate. It's a bit odd for Ohan to play along the idea of obeying the commander, let alone listening to his own father. It's not like him to care about him if we were to consider his past reactions. Their relationship is portrayed as pretty rough. It will only escalate with the response. After the hype of Ohan taking command, the messenger returns. You would think Osen would have a response to the request as well as a new order with new tactics. What they got instead is a baffling response that he has seriously gotten me frustrated. Basically, Olsen told them to keep up the good fight for the next day or so. That's it. What the actual hell? What kind of crap is that? All they was missing was an image of Olsen giving a big thumbs up for their hard work. That would be a hell of a mockery. What's really messed up isn't how they are being left in the dark, but the request for Ohan to take command wasn't addressed. If there's one thing that's worse than a rejection, it's being ignored. This is his son, and he wouldn't address him like a person at all. That's seriously messed up. Everyone keeps asking if there's anything more, but that's all Olsen said. This is getting irritating. Ohan moves forward and act like his orders are final and fair. I sense that he's really frustrated. I hope it doesn't affect him in the battle. In a way, I start to feel bad for him. Hell, even Ten pretty much acknowledged Ohan to be the rightful man to command, despite how much of an asshole he is to her. That said, Olsen is the one that is far more problematic than Ohan. I laugh how Shin leaves the conversation by going to take a leak and Ten is like, yeah! Hi for piss, huh? But seriously, she was in the moment, so it's fine. Anyway, it appears that the father-son dynamic is slowly entering this arc as a center focus, or rather, a development theme for Ohan. And the cliffhanger reinforced that claim. No pun intended, by the way, because Kanjo and Banyo having a chat on the cliff. Huh. Anyway, they talk about the questionable response, and Shin happened to be nearby. Kanjo now believes that because of that response, Olsen has no tie with Ohan whatsoever. It's as if they are strangers. Then a bomb is dropped. There's a good chance that Olsen doesn't share anything because Ohan may not be his son. I don't know why, but that is a pretty shocking development. I know it's a rumor, but even so, the shock value is good. It sounds like we have an old family drama in our hands. You have to remember that in this era, family heritage is a serious business. Wouldn't that mean Ohan isn't a legitimate child of old family? This can change everything. It's worth noting that it could harm the morale within the right wing. If Uncle Armin truly take his family name very serious, will they not find him suitable anymore? This is a really bad timing. Yet I'm very interested with this development. Overall, this chapter was interesting as they began the drama within the family. One in which I am looking forward to its development. It was still pretty nice to see Ohan to receive recognition he deserved. Though if the news break out and confirm to be true, will that vanish or not? Chin already has enough problems with Zhao. Now they may lose morale along the way. What a train wreck. And with the family drama being involved, it certainly is one. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. Well, we have a family drama in our hands. That should be fun. I do wonder, seriously, what the hell Olsen is doing with the right wing? It's like he really doesn't give a crap about them anymore. But surely there is a plan, right? I mean, he wants to win. He gotta do something. What do you think is Olsen thinking? Do you believe Ohan is truly not the son of Olsen? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.